What's up guys, almost all of us perform photo editing, some do it on an amateur level, others are pros in the field. Post processing isn't a mechanical thing, it's a lot more creative. Today I'll share with you some tips and tricks that you might find useful for post processing your own images. Before we start, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Honestly, it doesn't matter that much what photo editor you use, they are all more or less the same, although some programs might lack certain tools. Today I'll be editing with Photoworks, that is the program that I would really recommend, as it has tons of tools and features. Photoworks is a fine choice for both beginner level and professional photo editing. What's more, you don't need a super powerful PC to use it. I'll prove it by editing my image with a… Uh, oh, hold on a second, this H Soul Monstrosity. You will find the link to photoworks in the description and now let's get down to business i've already opened my image within the software now i'll switch to the tools tab and pick the crop feature i want to crop this photo a little bit i won't do it freehand but i'd rather find a preset here and overlay a grid of my choice i'll go within the three to four preset and the golden ratio grid now i'll crop the image this much and hit apply there we go now let's click this eye icon here to see the original picture. I'll be using this before and after feature quite a lot. Now let's switch back to the enhancement tab and adjust the white balance, because I'm not sure it's right. There is a lot of snow in the picture and we'll use it as the white balance point. The software will pick it as the average value of white balance and adjust this setting accordingly, either make it cooler or warmer. Now I just click this spot here and we are all set. Now I'll adjust the exposure. The photo is slightly dark as it was really gloomy outside. I'll crank up the exposure. The image looks a lot better already. Let's also increase the saturation. There are very few colors in the picture because of the snow, so I hope there won't be any distortions. Now let's switch to the colors tab and experiment with HSL. Let's turn the reds in a pink. I wouldn't touch the oranges since you can and compromise the color of the skin. Now I'll go to the saturation tab, I'd lower the oranges. Now the reds. We can either increase and decrease their saturation. I'm thinking about increasing it. Now the luminance. I can make the girl's beanie brighter or darker. I won't be changing the sharpness since I was shooting with my iPhone. There are tons of tiny details like twigs and branches in the image that I'm afraid can cause artifacts uh, to pop up. So if you are editing a picture shot with an iPhone, don't overdo on sharpness. Now I want to eliminate a light source somewhere up in the sky. Let's pick the gradient filter and draw a gradient over the image. Let's pull it up. Now all I have to do is to increase the exposure. Let's crank it all the way up. Now let's adjust the position of the gradient. I want to lower the shadows so that the trees still have depth and contrast. Other Otherwise, the picture won't look natural. I think the image looks fine, however I'd increase the highlights for good measure. Now we can compare the edited photo with the original. I think the result is fairly impressive. Since we've increased the saturation, the bark on the trees has taken on a nasty brownish or greenish tint. I want to focus on the attention on the girl, that's why I want to desaturate the trees. This is how it's done. I'll just pick the adjustment brush and point over the trees. Then I simply decrease the saturation. So let's paint over all of the trees and desaturate them. Granted, you can not only decrease, but also increase the saturation of certain elements, or adjust the shadows, exposure, etc. I won't apply any of this to the current picture, otherwise the trees will stand out on it. All I need to do is to get rid of the brown color. Now let's see the progress. This is what we had and this is what we have now. Not bad, but it can get better. Since the picture was taken with a wide angle lens, there are distortions and perspective flaws all around. I want to make the model slightly tinier. Let's pick the body sculpt tool, it's under the retouch tab, and place the markers over the girl's body, like this. Now all we have to do is to control the effect intensity. The higher the value, the more slender the body becomes. We can even add a 
a bit of curls of the body or making the legs longer. I personally prefer to slim the arms down just a bit using the reshape tool. Just make sure to show restraint it is. I'll slim the arms just the tiniest bit and it all looks so much better. Now let's add brightness to the bottom of the picture. I'll be using the radial filter for it. The tool is really similar to the gradient filter and the adjustment brush, but the effect is limited to a circular shape. I'll draw a huge circle so that it doesn't fit into the frame. Let's put the selection at the top of the image. Make sure to have the processing checked as outside, otherwise I'll be changing the picture inside the selection. Now I'll increase the exposure a bit. Looks fine, so I'll apply it. So this is what we had before and this is what we have now. Now I'll make the light source in the sky a little more realistic. Since the original picture was taken on a gloomy sunless day, I suggest we add some sun rays to the picture. Let's switch to the effects tab and pick the sun rays tool. You see I already have rays applied to my image, now I need to adjust the position and other settings. Those settings are quite simple. The warmth of the rays and sun disk, penetration and randomization of the rays. I'd say that the effect looks decent and more often than not is really realistic. Once I'm through, I just click apply. Now I'll move back to HSL. Now let's switch to the saturation and lower the reds and increase oranges a bit. The picture looks fine and complete. It's ready for saving and sharing, but I still want to keep working with it for creativity's sake. I found an alpha channel picture with falling snow. I want to overlay it. I'll drag the file over the photo works and pick the overlay option. I'll adjust the layer size and move on to the settings. Here we have transparency and shadow. Now let's add some more effects, like grain for instance. Just make sure you keep it down. Larger grains will make your picture blurry and will effectively ruin it. Smaller grains might be hard to see at all. Let's adjust the shadows, mid-tones and highlights. Now we have a nice noise in the image. Well, you might not see it in the YouTube videos, but it's there. There is also the soft contrast effect. Let's look at how it's changed the image. We can also slightly lower the contrast and whites. It will also give a nice effect. Let's do it with the curves. You can find them under the tools tab. But I actually like the brightness of the picture, so I probably don't want to change anything. Now I'll move on to 3D LUT presets. Let's browse through the available profiles. I won't be using presets of my own this time. Here's I love this drum option. Let's apply it just even so slightly. Now it's time to see the before and the after. Let's now choose an effect to apply. I'll pick the lighting effect and apply this angular glow just a pinch. I've also been a sucker for lighting effects like this, but if you don't, let's agree or disagree. Now let's compare our final picture with the original. I really think that the edited version looks good enough to be shared on, say, Instagram. What do you think? Now just as I've said before, photo editing is a creative process and you might not be willing to use all these features that I've shown you. But I really hope I was able to persuade you that photo editing isn't a complicated thing and that I've taught you a few nifty tricks. If so, please like this video and subscribe to this channel and make sure to leave a comment. My name is Victor and that's goodbye for now and hope to see you next time.